Welcome to Business Nigeria. Well, today we'll be looking at issues surrounding the world of business as usual. Uh, but let's look at some top stories uh, in the news. The Nigerian Labour Congress wants that electricity consumers won't accept any form of tariff hike. We've known of issues around the multi-year tariff order and issues around electricity tariff. This goes talking about competitive tariffs. I think those issues are propping up one after the other. Let's see how that plays out. The Securities and Exchange Commission begins verification of 4,160 investors' uh, claims on Ponzi schemes. Hmm. That sounds very, very interesting. Today, our focus is on the economy and, of course, the just released inflation rates. The figures are trickling out. Uh, they are coming up. They are coming in. Let's see how it breaks down and what it actually means for a man on the street and how he puts food on our table. That's what we'll be looking at today. It's Business Nigeria. The acting director of the Department of Petroleum Resources, Ahmed Shakur, uh, has reiterated the commitment of the department to intensify its regulatory role uh, for the oil and gas industry. Speaking at a media briefing in Lagos, the acting director adds that the department will not tolerate any act of infractions by licensed operators in the sector. We have details in this report. In the past few weeks, the Department of Petroleum Resources continued its routine monitoring exercise across oil and gas facilities operating across its jurisdiction. In one of the outings around Ayobo area in Lagos, the team discovered and sealed off an illegal liquefied petroleum gas plant owned by Petrocam Trading Nigeria Limited. The team observed that the facility did not meet required minimum safety distance to adjoining structures and operated without due approval from the DPR. As of today, the company has complied with the extent to rules of the department they have shown remorse for their action. We have reviewed their position and uh, we have decided to lift the suspension against the company. However, we want to bring to the notice of the members of the public that the department has zero tolerance to any act of infraction by the licensed operators in the oil and gas industry. Few of those companies that are in operation, especially in downstream, are adding value. We will collaborate to make sure we create a conducive environment for them to operate. After the seal was broken by the owners of the facility, the department took various steps to impose sanctions against the company. But now, according to the DPR, the company has complied with the rules, hence the suspension has been lifted. This should serve as a warning to all marketers that henceforth the department will not hesitate to impose appropriate sanction for any defaulting marketer. The acting director of the DPR says this will be a continuous process, warning all oil marketers to play by the rules or get their fingers burnt, as the DPR will not hesitate to sanction erring marketers guilty of committing infractions. Electricity consumers in the country say they will not comply with the payment of electricity bills if the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission implements the proposed increase in tariff. This was made known by the President of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Ayuba Waba, at a public consultation on capping of estimated billings organized by NERC in Abuja. Mr. Waba said many consumers do not receive supply from electricity distribution companies due to high tariffs. He also warned NERC not to follow the pressure mounted on the uh, commission by power firms calling for an increase in electricity tariff. The Labour leader wants the commission and stakeholders in the power sector to think of alternative ways to generate revenue instead of options that will not meet the supply of electricity to the consumers. The Securities and Exchange Commission has started verification of 4,160 unpaid investors of the illegal investment scheme organized by Dantata Success and Profitable Company. Earlier in February, SEC sealed off the premises of the uh, company in Kano State for engaging in legal capital market activities, saying its investments operators fell within 
uh, funds management with our registration with the commission. Now the commission said the company was not registered and it was using a plan to seek for funds from unsuspecting members of the public, enticing them with returns of monthly interest on investments of between 25 to 50 percent, which depends on the nature and type of investments. The company sold firms to prospective investors according to their investment plans ranging from 1,000 to 3,000 naira, with a minimum amount investable being 50,000 and maximum amount of 5 million naira. The commission has released a schedule for the verification exercise to start on July 15th and to end July 20th. Report says that multidimensionally poor Nigerians are increased from 86 million to 98 million between 2017 and 2017. This was disclosed in the 2019 Global Multidimensional Poverty Index released by the United Nations Development Program and the Oxford Poverty and Human Development Initiative. The report states that the proportion of multidimensionally poor stands, uh, stands at more than 50% over the past decade up to 2017. The 2019 Poverty Index showed that more than two-thirds of the multidimensionally poor, that's about 886 million people, live in the middle-income countries, while 440 million live in low-income countries. Reports from the National Bureau of Statistics shows that Nigeria's inflation drops to 11.22% in the month of June. Now, this indicates that at 0.18% it points decrease than 11.40% that was recorded in the month of May. The report states that here there were increases in the prices of bread, cereals, meats, oil, fats, potatoes, yam, and other tubers, fish, vegetables, and fruits. Now, you can see the figures there. As at the month of April, it was 11.37%. And at the month of May, it went up to 11.40%. But as a drop now. Now, the heavy rainfall and flooding in key regions of the country may have adverse effects on crops. That's talking about food prices. On a month-on-month -month basis, the food sub index increased by 1.36%. In June 2019, down by 0.05 percentage points from 1.41 percent recorded in May 2019. To discuss this now, I have an economist, Emeka Okengo. He joins me from our Buja studio and also the head of research with FSDH Marchand Bank joins me via Skype. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on the show this afternoon. Now, let me start. Ayo, let me start with you. Ayo, what were you expecting? 11.22% is what we had from the NBS. What was the projection of the FSDH Marching Bank? Which, um, research projected 11.32 for the month of June. So the figure that was released was marginally lower than what we expected. But again, what we had said was exactly what happened, that it was going to go down on account of a deceleration in the rate of growth between uh, May and June this year, um, lower than what happened in the last, in the corresponding period of last year, 2018. Okay, let me ask the same question to Mr. Maker now in Abuja. Mr. Maker, what were you expecting? Some are saying that this seems to be positive for the Nigerian economy. Thank you very much. Uh, each time we have a conversation, I say to you, uh, first, yes, it's, it's always good when you have uh, economic uh, figures or statistics uh, deep in, uh, but they don't necessarily or they shouldn't necessarily form, you know, the basis of what you call concrete judgment. You know, that's very important. And I say this for two reasons. One, uh, I've always argued that uh, the MBS has not been able to establish, you know, that capacity to be able to uh, draw what you call real time, you know, uh, primary source data. So a lot of these figures you also see are based, you know, probably on scoping st studies or some level of perceptions. But having also said that it's good that our inflation rate is dropping, uh, but there are indicators, there are indices you must be able to look at that are back ends, that things that happen at the back end that must be able to now, you know, help you in doing uh, a more uh, holistic uh, 
analysis. And that, that will be, has your currency gained any weight? Uh, has your exchange rate you know, gotten any better? Uh, have you gotten more industries? Are there more you know, cash flows into your system? Have businesses got back on track you know, and all that? So it's just not uh, a, a straight answer. Uh, yes, let's start celebrating because in your intro, uh, you mentioned the month, you know, month, year to year. Uh, you should also talk about the day to day. You know, these are all the things, factors that you need to, you know, put together to be able to, you know, give uh, a more sustainable answer, if you may. All right, then we'll move on with that discussion. Ayo, let me ask Ayo the same. Ayo, do you think these figures from NBS really means speaks to what is on ground? And just like uh, Mr. Mikael Kengo has identified, that these figures, yes, they're coming out. But really, let's look at the macroeconomic activities and fundamentals. What do we see on ground? Does, is it really at par with this figure coming from the NBS? Yes, it does. It's, it's, it's in line with the reality. And, uh, and you know, each time we appear on this program to discuss inflation numbers, I always say that the fact that the headline inflation rate dropped does not mean that the prices of quality um, consumer goods dropped. It only means that the price of consumer goods dropped a little bit um, lower than um, at the rate of growth was actually lower than the rate of growth in the corresponding period of last year. So if you look at month on month, this month, like you mentioned earlier, um, increased by about 1.36 month on month, the headline inflation, uh, the, the consumer price index. In the corresponding period of last year, it moved up by 1.57, and that's where you have a drop. So if the price of um, consumer goods, if the price dropped in the period, it then means that you are going to have a negative inflation rate. But as long as this positive inflation rate higher than 1%, I mean 0%, it then means that prices of consumer goods actually went up, but um, could be at a lower rate of increase than the corresponding of last year. So it actually reflects what is going on um, in the economy. Okay, Mr. Mika, let's now look at food. I'm going to Abuja now, asking Mr. Mika this question. Let's look at food inflation now. We have 13.56% as at this month, up from 13.79. Now let's look at the price of foodstuffs, uh, flooding, and all of that that has been happening at this time. Uh, what's the direct relationship? What do you think, or uh, what are your, what do you, what do you, what's your reaction to these figures coming, talking about the composite food uh, inflation rate? Yes, I'd rather not take it from the figures. I'd rather take it from the realities on ground, okay? And what are these realities? Farmers are not on the farms, okay? Uh, and because farmers are not on the farms, you might be depending on importation. And because you're going to be depending on importation, you're going to be depending on forex. That's a negative, okay? Two, you're also now hearing uh, alerts, you know, from uh, the relevant authorities on floodings that are going to be happening that's also a negative. You're also now hearing, you know, about the insurrections and insurgencies and altercations, you know, at the level, you know, of uh, the villages. People are saying they can't go to their farms, you know, they're being attacked, they are scared. Uh, that's also not a good uh, uh, signal. You're also now looking at the issue of climate change. So in all this, if you put all these indicators together, uh, and then you just oppose that against that figure you have, you might actually see that they don't sit very well, okay? So what's important is that, I mean, and then more so when you begin to now also identify uh, with the fact that we are not doing a lot of technology-based, you know, food production. What, what we're doing is farming, you know, and those are not, you know, really the same thing, you know. Uh, you can produce food with technology, you know, without necessarily, you know, applying the land in the real sense of the word land, okay? so. And if you come to also not just oppose this fact against, you know, uh, the very obvious uh, fact that we are not uh, applying a lot of technology into our food production process, then, you know, it begins to worry you some more. So the answer is, uh, in actually in the question, is very worrisome. You know, I see that uh, maybe by the end of uh, the food production cycle, we might, if we're not very careful, you know, be going back where we're going to be, in, you know, depending on other people to mm. be able to, you know, feed us. Okay, Ayo, Ayo, let me ask you also this, this now. Ayo is in Lagos. Uh, Ayo, I am looking at the proposed or the planned hike in electricity tariff 
uh, which has not been the order of the day for some time now. We've maintained that, uh, that level. But now the discos have always been talking about cost-reflective tariffs. And now uh, I think NERC is looking that way. Labor unions are already kicking against it. If that happens, what would have happened to inflation? And also, let's project the minimum wage. I, I, I guess uh, they also have even gotten the alert as at the moment, as in government workers and all that. What effect would that have one way or the other on, let's look at the economy now in general? So our projections shows that if, you, if the government adjusts the electricity tariff to a level that reflects current realities, and then they, at the same time, adjust the pump price of PMS to a level that will enable the um, price to cover the landed cost with some margin for oil marketers. It, those two factors will impact on inflation rates, all of that things being equal. And then our projection shows that it's just going to add about 250 basis points, that's 2.5%, to the inflation curve. So you're going to shift it by that. And at the moment, if you have 11.23, we are talking about less 11.22 as at June, we are talking about less than 13%. However, the gain to consumers in terms of improvement in electricity distribution, in terms of employment generation, in terms of product increase in productivity in the country, reduction in costs for manufacturing entity and enabling them to produce a bit cheaper because of improvement in um, you know, lower power cost, will then filter into the economy in terms of positive development. I do not think that the adjustment to um, the minimum, new minimum wage will add so much, maybe 0 0.23, uh, percent to the um, inflation rate. But inflation rate without those adjustments this year may likely continue to drop to November until November when we expect it to inch up a little bit to about 11.35. Um, uh, so it's very good we need to adjust those two prices, which we and FX state research had been discussing a couple of um, for some months now because of the positive impact on the economy. Government revenue will be enhanced, then it will enable government to channel more resources to provision of um, necessary infrastructure, pro, um, you know, enhance securities to ensure that the investment environment, the business environment is improved. Hmm, indeed, a good one. Then, me, me, Mister, let me go straight to Abuja now. Uh, Mr. Mika, I, I, I am wondering, as we expect the MPC uh, Monetary Policy Committee to be meeting, I think, sometime next week, now with this new figures that's being reeled out by the NBS, what are your expectations? Well, I think they're going to be leaving uh, the MPR rates at the same rates. Uh, right now, we can't afford to take any risks, uh, but it's also good to commend uh, you know, the new policy of uh, the CBN, uh, as much as I think is uh, uh, front-end loaded, uh, I think uh, the LDR rates, you know, at 60% is not a bad idea. But like I keep arguing every time, I think what it is we should also push for is patient capital. You know, uh, it's, it's just not all the loans all the way. I think we should be able to kick in the equity, you know, uh, what you call equity funds or patient funds, especially you know, funds that can be able to, you know, get businesses ready at the back end, you know, so that when you are now throw in these loans, you are not throwing in loans for people to now go and start doing business studies, you know, that start doing, doing uh, what you might be able to call your PPAs, you know, and all that. What's, what's key for me is that in growing our economy, we must be able to grow it conclusively. One, skills, the skill sets must be right. Two, the business programs must be right. Three, then the policy of lending must be right, and all these things must tie to what you call your return on, in, you know, on investment. You know, so there must be some kind of tie-in between your back end and your front end. Otherwise, yes, you can have all your NPLs lower or increase, uh, you know, your lending rates. It might not really help. What is going to help is for us to be able to tie in every little detail, uh, maybe in one word, you know, have what you call a think-through attitude to be able to reflect our economy. 
and our business practices. Okay, Ayo, I, I, before I go, I'd I, I like to get, get Ayo's views too in regards to the meeting. The, what are your projections? What do you think would happen at a forthcoming NPC meeting looking at all of these figures? There is high probability that the Central Bank, the NPC of the Central Bank, may likely lower the policy rates at this meeting by another 50 basis point to about 13% on account of the stability in the foreign exchange rates and again stability in, I mean, declining inflation rates that we've seen. Like I mentioned, they won't um, implement policy, announce policy based on, you know, um, in, data that is backward looking, but they will look at the outlook um, in the next, in the short to medium term. And the outlook shows that inflation will continue to drop until November if there are no adjustments to the um, LSU tariff and PMS, um, pump price. Um, and again, if you look at the, the policy thrust of the central bank that, has that it has rolled out, it shows that growth is the um, primary objective that they want to drive at this particular time in, in order to ensure that the economy begins to, um, to, to, to create a level, stimulate it to a level where we are going to generate more jobs and then asking banks now to lend money to the economy. If the economy is not expanding, then there may likely be an incidence of not performing loan. And the central bank is aware of all this and therefore what they will want to do is to ensure that they provide necessary um, uh, factors that will stimulate the economy. And lowering rates seems to be um, a a policy they want to pursue to enable them to achieve that. Ayo Akinwumi, their head research at FSDH Martin Bank, Emeka Okwengu, an economist there, live from Abuja Studios. Thank you, gentlemen, for spending your time with us, sharing your thoughts on Business Nigeria. Thank you again. Moving on now, Ren Air plans to cut the number of flights it operates next year as delays have been predicted before the Boeing 737 MAX is allowed to fly again. The airline said it could be in, a, in late December before regulators clear the aircraft to return to the skies after two fatal crashes. Ren Air was awaiting delivery of 58 planes before summer but expects to receive half. The airline said it was in talks with airports about which of its herbs could suffer courts and also plan to talk to its staff and unions about the closures. The airline is expected to carry 157 million passengers in which uh, in the year to March 2021. That's about 5 million fewer than it had been planning for. But that's our show today. Thank you for watching. Let's do this again tomorrow. Same time. Enjoy the rest of your day.